Hi guys and welcome to the page. I had a chance to meet Dan at Old Car Festival 2023 and this video is all about his entire camping display. Really excited to share this with you so let's just get right into the interview and enjoy. So I am here with Dan's incredible display. He actually has um, this Model T, has that trailer over there and then has that uh, tent over there. Now, uh, here comes Dan. He's going to start talking about just exactly what we're looking at here. So, Dan, thanks for your time. Tell me, uh, tell me about your uh, your Model T and this uh, camp collection. Well, actually, the cars aren't mine. The cars are on loan. But I'm I'm not a car collector. I tell people I'm a camping collector. Okay. And for the past oh, about three or four decades, I've been collecting vintage camping equipment, primarily looking at the decade of the teens and the 1920s. Okay. The reason being is that motor camping reached its height of popularity in the decade from 1920 to 1930. And, and what do you think brought that about? Uh, more and more people had automobiles, more and more people started to hit the road. And when they hit the road, they found out that there was really no infrastructure. There were no motels. Uh, there were restaurants. You could eat at a hotel dining room. Uh, you could stay at a trackside hotel. But that kind of went against the very concept of individual mobility. Sure. So if you're out driving a car down the road, you want to stop where you want to stop or when you want to stop. And you don't want to go have a bath and then get dressed up to go to dinner at a hotel dining room. It's much easier to cook something on a gasoline stove or a campfire and just eat in your campsite. So the whole idea of motor camping was born. Uh -huh. By the early 20s, there were between three and five million motor campers on the road. And that'll give you an idea. I always tell people, Baseball really isn't a national pastime. Motor camping was a national pastime. Kind of makes sense to me. So tell me about the stove that you've got right here. Okay. Um, this is a utility auto kitchenette. Okay. It was made uh, by the uh, Riddle Sheet Metal Company in okay. San Francisco. Uh, George Riddle actually held the design patent on this one, but it's it's unique in the fact that it's a running board kitchenette, but it has its own built-in gasoline stove. Wow. And then above the stove, there is an oven, so you can bake muffins or bread. Okay. And it's, it's a, essentially a gasoline camp stove within the whole unit. So gasoline, not, not propane. No, gasoline. gasoline. And part of the theory of these gasoline appliances especially for the early motor campers, uh -huh. it used the same fuel that was in your car's gasoline tank. So you didn't have to look around for firewood or if it was raining, uh, you didn't have to carry kerosene with you. And in fact, all the stove manufacturers also sold a small siphon pump. Oh my so goodness. when it's time to cook your dinner, you simply get to your car's gas tank, the tube goes in the tank, a couple strokes of the pump, and you can fill up your gas tank on the side of the stove. And this is a unique unit on, in addition to the oven and the stove, there's a built-in ice box. Okay. And so I, I would assume back then dry ice? Uh, dry ice or just wet ice. Okay. Same thing. What's wet ice? Just, just regular frozen water. Ice. Okay, gotcha. And then your eggs come in a little cardboard container. Okay. And I, you know, part of my idea of collecting, I love little signs of life. At some point, someone wrote eight more on the eggs. Oh, so they right knew neat. knew how many eggs were left in the unit. Gotcha, okay. And so what's uh, what's this right there? That's an insulated jug, essentially okay. like a thermos jug. This was made by the Universal Company, Okay. Uh, eventually absorbed by thermos. Okay. But basically, oops. There's a gasket. All right. So, and there's a glass liner. Okay. But it's just something to keep uh, cold foods cold or warm foods warm. Nice, nice. And then uh, this is more along the lines of a little primitive camping right here. Yeah. And like I say, you know, even even though you had a gasoline stove, 
the idea of cooking over over a campfire. Right. The grid itself is a collapsible cooking grid. It's okay. another piece of motor camping equipment. And that grid folds up to be a little bundle about two inches by two inches by okay. 18, 20 inches long. Okay. And then what about this right here? Um, this caught my eye. Okay. Tell me about that. This is an, an evaporative refrigerator. It's a Stoll auto refrigerator okay. made by the Stoll Manufacturing Company. Frank Stoll was out in Colorado. He was a um, maker of canvas goods, fruit picking baskets, awnings for buildings, but he also got into camping equipment. He made tents, but he also made this uh, evaporative refrigerator. And okay. basically what it is, it's a tin box there's a rack inside to get it mounted onto the, the running board. Right. And then there's a, uh, a flax water bag above it and below. So you fill up this, you take out the cork, fill this up with water, take out the cork here, fill this up with water. The reason it's in a cage is that once these are filled with water, if anything touches them, the water will the water wick, leak out. Yeah. wick out. So just like, like your... Uh, your canvas bag that sits, sits here in the exactly. front. Exactly, same principle. Okay. The difference is that's just the bag to hold water. Right. This is the bag that holds the water around a tin box. Gotcha. So as that water would evaporate, simple physics, it cools the contents of the tin box. Right, nice. And, and the then thing, as, there, yeah. There's also a brass spigot, so okay. if you're thirsty going down the road, pull over the side, put your tin cup under the spigot and you get cool drinking water nice. right from the bag. Nice. So as I walk around the, the T model, I see a tent. And uh, tell me about this tent. Um, they're called a baker tent, or I also refer to them as a lean-to tent. Okay. But basically it's perhaps the lowest end of motor camping. For seven dollars, you could buy this tent mail order. It's a piece of canvas. Uh -huh. It is. It's marked auto tent, uh -huh. but it's it, it's made to be set up right onto the car, so okay. the car becomes part of your living area. Yeah. You don't need any poles to hold up the tent. These are simply here, so that if you want to take the car into town, you untie it from the spokes. You <coughs> Excuse me. Drop this flap down. Uh -huh. Off you go in the car, and the tent stays set up. Now, I recall seeing uh, uh, little later versions of this available in the Sears catalog. Mm -hmm. um, could this have been something that would have been a, a Sears catalog item? Uh, yeah, these are, these are mail order items. Right. And, uh, like I say, they're kind of the lowest end of, of motor camping equipment. For $7, you're off camping. Sure. Inside is a Red Seal made, a Red Seal bed made by the Red Seal Company, right. also in Colorado. Okay. And that's a spring steel bed. So you're not sleeping on the ground. And looks like it's uh, foldable or collapsible. Yep. The legs come off and fold okay. up into a bundle. The top rolls up and it all fits on the running board in a little leatherette oil skin cover. Okay, so we graduate from $7 to what caught my eye right over here. And so let's take a look at this trailer because I thought this was so fascinating. And I do... Uh, my wife and I do camping and whatnot. Um, I used to own a teardrop trailer, but uh, this particular trailer just won me over the moment I saw it. So tell me how you acquired this. Well, this is a 1927 auto camp trailer. It's made in Saginaw, Michigan. Okay. The company was actually founded in 1916. It's one of the first, it's actually the second recreational vehicle manufacturer in the United States. And it's a trailer meant to be pulled behind a Model T. It's that era. Uh -huh. uh, Auto Camp Equipment Company uh, sold this unit in 1927 for $345. So that's a big jump from that $7 tent. Yes, it is. Yeah. So this is the deluxe end of motor camping. Okay. But this is also, in 1927, it's essentially the pinnacle of motor camping. Okay. Because after 1927, it started to wane and tent trailers gave way to hard-sided towable trailers. Gotcha. So the, the whole evolution changes. But basically, this is a deluxe unit. It's a four foot by seven foot wood box. Okay. 
It has a one inch tongue and groove white oak floor. After they laid the floor, they took molten lead and put molten lead into all the seams and that keeps the dust from infiltrating up through the floorboards. There's two spring steel beds covered with wool felted mattresses. And then there's a series of wooden framework sticks that fit into sockets on the body of the trailer. The canvas tent stretches across it. And then under the floor of the trailer, there's two hatch doors. This hatch door is a dry groceries drawer and that will carry your gasoline stove or any other groceries. And on the left side is a galvanized ice box. Okay. So this is your refrigeration. Gotcha. So you put a 25 pound block of ice in there. And once again, it's, it's regular frozen water, wet ice, if you will. Okay. There's a drain in the bottom of the drawer and out of the bottom of the trailer. So as that ice melts, it drains out. All right, so it looks like, um, and I could be wrong, but it looks like the beds actually fold in on each other. Yeah. And then probably all the poles, the canvas, they slide underneath, yeah, is that correct? Into the bed of the trailer. So okay. fold it up. It's a four foot by seven foot box going down the road. It's also built on Model T running gear. The early trailer manufacturers used Model T running gear. For instance, on this one, the wheels, the hubs, the bearings, the tires, the tubes, and even the hubcaps are standard issue Ford Motor Company issue. The reason for that is if you're towing your auto camp trailer down the road and you broke a wheel parts are interchangeable you didn't go to the auto camp dealer because there weren't any you went to the ford agency and okay. so readily anything that would break or wear on the road was readily available at the local ford agency so that makes complete sense so then uh, a little upgrade is this still a uh, an actual gasoline stove? Yes, it is. Because I see the siphon pump. Yep, it's a and, gasoline uh, stove. Okay. And in fact, for three hundred and forty-five dollars, when you bought the trailer, you got this very model of two burner gasoline stove. It's an American camp cook. And then along with this, there was an electric light fixture that hang, hangs from the ridge pole, a collapsible shelving unit. Okay. There's a little cut down folding table that's only about 20 inches high. They didn't even give you stools with it because the theory was you sit on the bunks and then put the table on the floor of the trailer. But so basically for $345, you were set to go camping. Yeah. A very yeah. deluxe. So I just got to ask. <laughs> is that it's a folding camp bathtub. Is that a folding camp I, I, bathtub. I tell people it's the the epitome of ridiculous camping gear but it's made by the gold metal folding furniture company called metal uh was no connection no connection with the uh, gold medal flower company. Gotcha. Gold medal took their name from receiving yeah. gold medals in expositions. Well, I guarantee if I sat in that, I'd never get out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but gold medal made folding cots and stretchers. And sure. Yeah. All right. So, so tell me about this. That's a Hemingway tour kit. Okay. And it's essentially another version of the yeah. running board pantry that we looked at earlier. Right. But no stove. It's just simply a series of glass food storage box uh -huh. bottles, room for baked or um, canned yeah. goods, some packaged goods. It came with a couple thermos bottles for okay. hot and cold. There's a complete flatware set for four and a complete aluminum table set with porcelain cups for four. Okay. So wow. it essentially covers all your cooking utensils. The uh, aluminum pots and pans are from this gotcha. set. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then uh, like a little picnic basket type of thing yep. there? Okay. And part of the beauty of a lot of this motor camping equipment, this it is looks a, collapsible. It's a duplex folding picnic basket. Okay. It's also watertight. You can use it as a bucket. Okay. But is that crazy or what it collapses to be about 25 percent of its size which in a model t you need every ounce of yes space all right and so then we get into what i'm more accustomed to and that's tent camping now i don't think i could get my wife to stay in this but i still got to hear about it so uh again Gasoline stove, mm -hmm. right? This happens to be a model number one Coleman. In okay. 1921, 
Coleman didn't invent the gasoline stove. They just made it a little bit better. But uh, other, other people had invented the stove. Other people were manufacturing it. But Coleman took off. And a couple improvements they had. One is that the unit on top is a fold-over oven. So there's your oven to bake. Wow. And then the other improvement that they had, a couple practical improvements, that the tank itself was attached directly to the stove. Okay. There are no fittings that are going to loosen up or leak. And then when you're ready to pack it up, it just simply swings into the stove. The other thing is that all the gasoline appliances required pumping of air right. to charge them. Coleman built the pump right into the tank uh -huh. so you didn't lose the pump on the road. Uh -huh. Because if you had a gasoline ap appliance like a lantern or a stove and you had a separate pump, if you lost that pump, you weren't going to cook. And then, so years Coleman, later, they still use that same technology. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 And, and then the other end of the tank is a uh, filler neck to put the gasoline in. Okay. And there's a built-in funnel. So you don't even need a funnel to fill it. Oh, wow. And once again, the siphon pump. Coleman, Coleman itself, this is a Coleman liquid siphon, right from the Coleman Lamp Company. Gotcha. A little brass pickup with a screen in it, uh -huh. into the tank, a couple strokes, and you're filling up your gas tank on your stove. Absolutely brilliant. So tell me about this tent. The tent is about 1930. It's okay. uh, made by the Camel Tent Manufacturing Company, which is still in business, I think in Tennessee. But it's a little seven by seven, known as a, either a marquee tent or it's just a freestanding tent. It's waterproof canvas, and that's part of the, the challenge for collecting vintage camping goods. The waterproofing was very nice in the in the day, right. but the problem is over the years the waterproofing rots the canvas. So that the first cut we looked at over there, the canvas uh -huh. has never been treated. Okay. So that way it's in pretty good condition sure. for 20s tent. Sure. This one is really showing some wear and it's starting to rip and it's just because the canvas is rotting. Gotcha, gotcha. And that's primarily due to the water waterproofing material. This is absolutely an amazing display of camping equipment that I've never seen anywhere. How long? Have you been collecting this? Uh, I'd like to say about 30 or 40 years. Wow. I always tell people it starts innocently enough yes. with one item. And then over the years, uh, I we've been doing this exhibit at the Old Car Festival since 2002. So this is my 22nd year doing this exhibit. Wow. I've owned the Auto Camp trailer since 2009. 2009. How did you acquire that? <clears throat> it was on eBay, like like a lot of things. Really? Um, it was an interesting story. Uh, I'm the fifth registered owner. We can trace it back to the original purchaser in 1927. And the, oh my goodness. The reason being is in 1927, this retired school teacher from Syracuse, New York, wanted to go camping, so he wrote letters to various manufacturers, and he ended up buying an auto camp. And then we know his name and address because he hand wrote instructions on how to set up and take down the tent on the back of letters that he received from his stockbrokers. Oh my goodness. So we had his address, we knew his name, and he, he hand written all these instructions. All this material, including the original sales literature, was found in one of those drawers when this trailer was found languishing in a barn in upstate New York. Wow. So there was a gentleman who found it. He wasn't interested in a camp trailer. He wanted a utility trailer. So he went to a local RV dealer uh -huh. and said, I'll trade you this old broken down camp trailer for a utility trailer. That RV dealer took it and did about 80% of the restoration. 60% uh -huh. of the box is original wood. He uh, replaced one of the tires, so one of the wheels was collapsed. He had the canvas sewn. This was in the early 70s. Uh -huh. He uh, used it in the Boulevard Sesquicentennial Parade. Okay. Then he sold it to a family up in Buffalo, New York, and they towed it behind a 1927 Chevrolet for a few years. And then that gentleman died, and his son inherited it. Uh -huh. 
His son was a drag racer, and he had no interest in this trailer, really. Right. It never went very fast. So he had the bearings replaced, put new tires on it, and then had it shrink wrap, and it stayed in his climate controlled garage for about 20 years. Wow. And then he decided it was time to move it on, and he put it up for auction, and I always tell people I just wanted it $5 more than the other guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes, uh... That's what it takes yeah. on eBay. And my, so. and my goal was to get it back on the road. And since since 2009, we've been out to the Lincoln Highway Centennial in Kearney, Nebraska. We've been up to uh, London, Ontario for the Fleetwood Cruise Inn. We did a special uh, exhibit with the Tin Can Tourist, 100th anniversary in Tampa, Florida. And uh, we're also members of the Tin Can Tourist. We show it at least twice a year at TCT events around the country. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time You're and, more than and welcome. for you allowing me to step inside the ropes and, and just really, really take a look at, at it, just stuff you just don't see at a normal car show. So I, I just well, really appreciate your time. Part, part of the goal in this exhibit is we're trying to show what people did with cars. Yeah. You can go to hundreds of car shows, and this is a unique exhibit because this is the relatable of what people did with cars. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thanks again. Well, thank you. So, friends, I hope you enjoyed uh, Dan talking about all of the vintage camping equipment that he has collected over the last couple of decades. Hey, remember to give us a like and subscribe. Super important to us, but most of all, be blessed.